Swagger is an Apple series and its second season about an up-and-coming high school superstar basketball player named Jace Carson. On this podcast, we like to discuss the most recent segment of a different series every show. Today, that is Rise and Fall, the third installment of the Swagger season, which dropped last week. It's July 12th. Welcome to today's episode. The last Apple show that we reviewed, I was pretty tough on. Hijack. Yeah. So many plot holes. Happy to report, Swagger Season 2, Episode 3, no plot holes. I had a big feeling that you were probably going to enjoy this, because this show has gotten critical acclaim kind of across the board, especially for kind of how authentic it is. I know that you knew that Kevin Durant had to work on this show. Mm -hmm. I saw him as an executive producer. He is, and he really wanted to cast actual people that played basketball for the thing. So my question was, how much basketball is in this episode? Well, that actually gets to my problems with the show, because everything made sense. No plot holes, like I said, but I did not enjoy this episode. None of it felt necessary. We had four storylines going on, and none of them really included basketball. Interim coach Ike, Baby Cube, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> becomes full-time coach of Cedar Cove. Um, Jace's sister makes their mom a love knot profile, which is like Tinder. Jace gets super depressed um, while going party hopping over his 18th birthday. Mm-hmm. And a teacher slash principal slash director, I'm not exactly sure what his job title is, but he's in charge of a lot, Dr. Emery Lawson, he gets a backstory. Yes. Those are the four storylines. But I feel like I was sold a bag of goods here because this is billed as a sports drama, right? Yeah. This is not a sports drama. This is a soap opera. Um, <laughs> it's a soap I opera? Really want, yeah, I wanted to see a good Friday Night Lights season one episode. Instead, I got a bad later season episode of One Tree Hill. Um, the focus felt really jumbled here. The basketball uh, storyline was kept in the backcourt. Um, and the title of the episode is called Rise and Fall. So I wanted to see the main star of the show have his big rise and then his big fall, his big topple. This has been compared a lot to Friday Night Lights. So it's strange that you say that it really wasn't like it. Mm-hmm. I can see where the One Tree Hill connection comes into play um, because I actually watched the beginning scene to this season where I think uh, Cedar Cove ended up winning state. And it was a cross between One Tree Hill and... Creed and Bel Air. But did you actually get to see basketball? Yes, it was the first like 10 minutes. And that's what I think happened. I think in the first few episodes of probably season one and season two, they were like, we got to sell this thing. We got to show what these athletes can do, not Mm -hmm. just these actors, but like the cool stuff. But by episode three, this is where, where shows sometimes just hit the brakes. And that's what this did. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to play uh, devil's advocate to myself and pitch this as if it was a great episode, right? The rise and the fall of Jace. Jace starts the night on the top of the world. I think they've just won a basketball game. He's the star of an amazing team. He's got his favorite coach coaching him, again, uh, Ice Cube's kid. Uh, and he's now 18. He's popular, two years away from the NBA. Scholarship offers are rolling in. Uh, he's signing autographs for girls. He's got an entourage with him constantly. At his school, he is signing autographs for girls? Yeah, because they just won that basketball game. So they walk out and they're all like smug and happy. And, and, and girls are coming up and be like, hey, can you sign when this? When I was yeah. in high school, uh-huh. I did not see any basketball <laughs> right? players signing autographs. I think this high school is like geared towards their sports program. Mm -hmm. I think it's like a really elite sports program. So that makes a little bit more sense, you know, where like LeBron James probably went to high school is a little bit different than where where you or I did. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, so he's got the entourage with him. His mom is buying him condoms for all the sex he's about to have. (laughs) Weird, but... Moving on, all the cool kids are at these parties that he's going to, and I think primarily the parties are for him. He's set to hook up with this girl named Amber, who's super rich and who's hired IDK, who shouts him out because he's the DJ at her party um, as soon as he shows up. And uh, it's, it's the best day of his life, you know? And then his past catches up on him. This is this is so funny because the show is loosely based on Kevin Durant's life. Of course it is. So so the, that all this good stuff is happening to Jace in yeah. the first, what would you say, 15 minutes of the TV show? That's a good guess, yeah. It, well, I mean, he, the parties go on throughout the entire episode. But after the first 15 minutes, that's where, where the ball drops. And Crystal, his ex, 
who he is destined to end up with by the end of the series. That is his, like, star-crossed lover, mm -hmm. you know? She drops the news that there's this reporter snooping around, which kills the vibes, and now our main character is bummed, he's mopey, he's scared, he's constantly telling his group that he wants to go home. And, and what's the reporter and so, threatening? So, so there's this incident, right? Yes. And we all do shit when we're young, right? <laughs> That's kind of what this yeah. show is saying. It's like everybody does crazy stuff. That's actually what the yeah creator Reggie Rock by the woods yeah, said yeah, yeah, yeah. word from word. So they're 18 years old now. So this was already four years in the past. And apparently him and his pals one night back when they were kids, they went out and they beat the shit out of their old coach. Yes. No, I know. I know that's craziness. I kind of wanted you not to know that no, because but... the craziness of it was only revealed for me during the mid part. Of, or actually, I saw kind of a cliffhanger for it in the previously. And then I, I, I got more understanding of it as the episode went on and it just got more confusing. <laughs> well, OK, so it happened all the way back in season one because yeah. this show at the very beginning of season two confused some viewers even when they did a four year time jump. He was playing 14 in season one. Yes, and by the way, said was uh, like it took a long time for Apple to even renew this thing. Mm. I think the last episode of Swagger for season one came out in December of 2021. It took six months for Apple to renew it, and then a year for this uh, season to come out. So that's why they ended up doing the four-year time jump. And I think soon after you see them win state in their junior year at the beginning of season two, they do even a three-month time jump after that. Mm. But yeah, this took. By, I mean, they seem that age. They seem like they're 18 years old. Right. So. It was season one, episode six all on the line where I believe you either see the assault happen or they at least talk about it. Did no, they I'm, say... I'm pretty sure you see it because th there's probably some justification. Like, I'm, not, yes. yeah, I'm yeah. not assuming that these kids just did it. But it's hard not to see Jace as just this cocky ass dude with his friends who gets to attend these insane parties for a high school or famous rappers are calling out your name. And then he almost murders someone when he's a kid. And there's a video evidence of it. And it's just not super compelling or easy connect to connect to that character. I know I, that Warwick, uh, the reason they abused him was because uh, their teammate Crystal uh, was being abused it's, it's, by him. Uh, Crystal is, again, his girlfriend. The right. one that, yeah. And she she does the alibi, I think. That's why she knew about it. And that's why she told or warned um, Jace that like, yeah, people are snooping around. The, the thing's about to come out. However, what Jace does is he like pulls his crew together. And at the end of the night, after the parties, of course, because everybody's got to have their party time, um, he tells the three the three people who were involved, he was like, yeah, so there's a chance that this is going to come out now. But I think we just lay low because there was a chance it would come out four years ago and it never did. And one of his other friends was like, yeah, let's listen to Jace because like I was really freaked out and I would think that the cops would come for us. And I was like, well, if someone... If if the coach deserved it, wouldn't they have gone to the police or something? Mm -hmm. And no, apparently they didn't. So it was just such a big jump for you that the that like you found it hard to connect with the character. I understand that the show has probably done something to legitimize like why they did something like that when they were kids. But at the same time, it did feel a little bit like Friday Night Lights, but the bad season of Friday Night Lights. Friday Night Lights season two, when Landry, Jesse Plemons, murders a guy, and then they never go back to it <laughs> because they realize they've just ridden themselves into a crazy quarter. This is I never saw that. I never saw it's that. It's a well-known story. Like, it's because of the writer's strike. And so I'm thinking, well, maybe this is a writer's strike thing. No, I'm not really thinking that. I'm thinking, what is this show doing? Especially by the end of the episode, because the whole arc here for, for Jace is that by the next day, they all have to be on a bus to New York to go and play this other game. And so you got um, the coach there, right? And everybody's phone has blown up with this story that has dropped at the end of the episode. And he pulls Jace aside and he's like, so is there any truth to this? Keep in mind, there's video evidence of it of them running away from the scene of the crime the story though that i didn't like, know that the story is out like so everyone knows yeah, about but it. that's part of the reason why it didn't feel like this episode accomplished much because it, it it basically gave us this in the previously it said this is out this is about to come out there and then by the end of the episode it's out there but so like everyone all the so stuff there's, in the party there's, there's literally they are like pulling out their phones and they're able to read about the incident yeah everybody's getting alerts and so the again the coach has pulled them aside and he's like any truth to this and <laughs> And Jace decides to just double down. I mean, the jig is up and he's like, nah, man, that ain't me. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. All right. And so like that part of the episode, which is the main part of the episode, threw me for a loop. I, I didn't not enjoy how ridiculous it got. Just just based on like how I, Kevin Durant thought 
this this will represent, you know, like this will be a good way of showing my life. I mean, well, the the, the show has it's for like writing, acting, production values, and its social commentary. This oh, okay. is a show that has been very well liked by it seems everyone. Well, yeah, the every social commentary you can do it like subtly, you can do it like right on its face and tackle stuff. But this felt very preachy in this episode. It felt okay. like the writers kind of took a, a more um, I'm just going to say it as it is approach, but not in like a very finessed way. For instance, you remember when we watched Riverdale's season seven premiere? Yes. You had that storyline at the end where they brought up Langston Hughes. It was the Tillman case and uh, Tony's character uh, read a poem to everybody and it seemed like she had solved racism. Yeah, it was over the school's intercom, right? Yeah, it, but but the joke was that like everything had been resolved for right. Langston Hughes. They kind of poke fun at that in this show because they use Langston Hughes, but kind of in like a... Well, let me just explain the situation. So this is a really thriving community. Like very successful people go to this school... Uh, everyone's house is 4,000 square feet, um, and, and it's pretty diverse. So, like, the student population isn't just uh, one minority or anything, you know? Right. So, like, Coach Edwards' wife, who has come over there, she also works for the school. Um, she overhears these two girls talking at one of the parties that she's at about how people of color are not represented in their readings and how they've complained to their teacher about that, that the only, that besides Langston Hughes, they, they haven't learned about anyone else. Uh-huh. <laughs> Which seems like just an odd thing to be talking about. At, at, a, a, at a party. At a high school party. Yeah. That... yeah. And so um, Coach Edward's wife steps in and she's like, I'm actually going to be your diversity, equity, and inclusion advisor, and we're going to set up an appointment about this and sort out these issues. Sorry, and then, a, I, I just need to like stress at a party. This yes, is going these are on. like cheerleaders because this is like the cool kid party, you right? Know? Yeah, and so that's what that's what she ends up saying, and then they respond with like in in non sarcastic way. They're like, "Wow, that means so much coming from you." And <laughs> that's the type of kind of like preachiness that I'm I'm talking about. There was there was no way of 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 reading that scene in in a non like okay this was written for this exact purpose yeah. we also get a lot of backflashes of Dr. Emery where his dad is put through a ton of shit because he's black back in a day when like people would throw tomatoes at you and he would just have to always appear put together because he didn't want society to judge him harshly because that would give society an excuse to be racist. So how did they do the flashback story? Well, it started with the Dr. Emery being shown as a kid and literally walking into his uh, on his dad as uh, as he's finishing getting dressed and worked in the morning at 6 a.m. And the dad's like, why are you up? And then he's like, well, I want to be like you, dad. And he's like, well, if you're going to be like me, you have to know this. You have to look your best all the time. There's no excuses for looking any other way and you have to be put together. Later on, like I said, the dad works for a school. And so I think he like kicked one of the kids out who had like, uh, and so their parent got mad. Mm -hmm. and, and threw the tomato at him. But instead of fighting him, because the kid literally asks, and it's kind of an odd question for a kid, Daddy, why didn't you attack that man? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's you, usually, you didn't it's ask, usually the opposite like, way why around. did he attack you? Yeah. No, 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 it's <laughs> why didn't you attack him? <laughs> so, but, but, but then he's like, I couldn't, son, because that would take away from me. So it shows how Emery has grown up to be this very like regimented dude who always wears a shirt and a tie. And, and his storyline in this episode, the only basketball that that we get is that he challenges the coach of the basketball team Ike to a one-on-one -on -one basketball game. Like, right, I read about this. Yeah, yeah, and and so like the it's at first over like just whether or not the guy's going to wear a shirt to work and if he loses he would have to unbutton his shirt and uh, he ends up winning and then by the end they're playing for uh, the coach's job. Not whether or not he would be fired because he wasn't going to get fired, but whether or not he was going to go from interim coach to full-time coach, which it seemed like it was going to happen regardless and that's exactly uh -huh. what did happen by the end of the episode even in the previously it's like why am I interim co coach? I should be full-time coach and then by the end of the episode he's like you know what i i, I believe in you now you're full-time coach so so that's what i mean by like all the stuff in the previously kind of told you where the show was going to end and nothing really mattered in between unless you really wanted to see the daughter set up the mom's tinder profile or the mom talk about like how she saw jace making out with that amber girl on her instagram mm -hmm. <laughs> 
And she was like, that girl wants way more from you than you think. <laughs> the only thing I'll say in support of the thing is that, like, I've seen a lot of high school shows that like to amplify how crazy life yeah. is. And I get that, like, sports especially will do that. It will throw fame at people at an age where, like, no one else can really even put their minds into it. Knows how to deal with I, it. I, well, no, like, even, like, the portrayal is probably more realistic in that way where they're going to these crazy parties than in most high school shows where they just happen to know where the crazy parties are uh-huh. so 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 i'll give it that it's just it's just the beating up scene like the whole idea that they they decided that the best policy when they were 14 years old was to go and beat up their old coach it's just strange it was such a crazy plot point to throw into season one that i felt at least and i don't have anything to back this up that it was almost like the bojack horseman scene in season two yeah. where it was like he does something so irrehensible with the like 17 year old and girl. it would have ramifications that just bled out right. throughout the rest of the seasons at least it's only episode three, so they're probably going to get it resolved pretty soon. But at the same time, it's like he lied about it even when the coach confronted him. Well, it my my question like, is, why wouldn't the coach at that point, after he reads the uh, news article, figure out that Jace lied to well, him? Well, we're, we're cut there by the, that time. This is literally the, the very... They're all getting on the bus the next morning. Some of them are hung over. CJ, probably the the most like high schoolish because he's the sophomore that they dragged around all the parties yeah. with them. So he gets blackout drunk really quickly just seems uh, after one beer also surprising surprising lack of drug use like usually <laughs> that you would see some form of it but that's like the one thing they didn't want to show they wanted to show people raving and people going all out and there being djs and all that, that stuff but it was like when it came to the drugs no that no one well i mean i mean you would get drug tested in high school no so i'm not saying you that. wouldn't but like i mean at the parties i guess it's because the parents were at some of them but it just seems so like weird <laughs> no, I, yeah so matthew a cherry actually he was a former american football player for the jaguars and panthers and ravens from mm-hmm. 2004 to 2006 he directed this episode and oh. has worked on other shows like saved by the bell the wonder years keenan bel-air and abbott elementary all those focus on the high school angle he's actually an academy award-winning director as well for a short hair love back in like 2019 and wow. then you have the writers autumn joy jemerson she's worked a lot with will smith and like i robot bad boys hitch and even the show shrinking the apple series that well, we were how does will smith have anything not to do with shrinking? Oh, okay just That's with the other stuff yeah. okay and then conversely though you have joy kekin who also wrote for this episode joy he's kekin's a... name was all over this place yeah yeah, yeah, yeah he's worked with the he's worked on the wire homicide life on the street and standoff okay and so those are kind of two i feel like different uh different like shows being written and maybe that was the reason why this show this episode maybe felt so jumbled uh, I mean, I don't know. I just feel like because they sold the first two episodes as being the start of the season that they, they just did like a bottleneck. But like it still felt like money was being spent. It just doesn't feel like the story was moving all that long. By the way, I'm pretty sure that Joy Kekin is a lady. OK. Yes. So it, yeah. I will say that the reviews for this were given the full season. So maybe that is the reason why they've been so positive towards this series. Okay. Overall, the show has a 7.3 on IMDb. The episode that you watched has an 8. And for me, it's just a five. It's like just down the line middle. I did laugh at some parts uh, like where where they brought CJ back home. I did laugh when they basically tried to ignore the fact that they were about to get uh, their story dropped. Um, there was a podcast dude, one of the four people who beat up the coach. Uh, he, he gets wingmanned. And I think his name is Drew. And he, he starts having a nice time with Drea. So she, he kind of like taps out and he's like, I'm done for the night, guys. And uh, I just feel like they're good characters. It's just it, it's again that that story arc that I feel they need to get over if they want to get back to the basketball stuff. Like the 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 poster of the show is a guy dunking it, you know? Mm-hmm. And I wanted to see that. And this, I got nothing. This might have just been a case where the episode you watched was wrong. Because in No, it, no, 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 no. Like if people like it because no, they like no, the I'm show. Say, I'm saying that like to, to start off on. The, the weird oh. thing is that Apple, which always shows multiple episodes whenever a show is about to premiere, doesn't matter what season, only did for this show one episode each week. Week. I mean, you gotta you gotta see the thing at its weakest to understand it at its best. So I'm not necessarily upset that we jumped in season two, episode three. Also, there's there's just not a lot of shows these days with the writer strike, you know. So that's yeah. why we're doing this. But uh, but but yeah, you got a game for me or something? Yes, I do. Do right. end it off. Uh, so since this was executively produced by Kevin Durant, I wanted to test your basketball knowledge. And there are multiple choice. There's four questions. If you get two right, I'll say you pass. <laughs> okay. But. Uh, so the first question is, 
Who is the NBA all-time leading scorer with 38,387 points? A. Michael Jordan, B. Larry Bird, C. Magic Johnson, or D. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? Uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Did you know that? Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, so you got that right. Second one is, how many championships did Michael Jordan win on the Chicago Bulls? A, 4, Six. B, 5, C, C. Okay, you already got that. Yeah. The third oh, one. I watched The Last Dance, so I remember yes, they did I, three I at would... the beginning, three at the end. Okay, yeah. so the, uh, the third one is, LeBron James is the youngest player in NBA history to reach 30,000 points. After gaining this milestone at the age of 33 years and 24 days, whose age record did he beat? A, Kobe Bryant, B, Will Chamberlain, C, Carl Malone, or D, Tim Duncan? I do not know, but I'll say Kobe. You got that correct as well. Maybe cool. you can sweep it. Who did the Lakers beat in 2020 winning their 17th championship? The Bucks, the Celtics, the Heat, or the Clippers? Oh, this one's harder because the 2020 was the bubble year, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Oh, and I wasn't watching then. So the Lakers made it in, in 2020? Yeah. And give me the four that you were just putting up. The Bucks, the Celtics, the Heat, or the Clippers? The Celtics, the Heat, or the wait, sorry, the Bucks, the Celtics, the Bucks, the Celtics, the Heat, and the Clippers. I'm gonna go with Clippers. <laughs> it was the Heat. <laughs> oh, well, it, yeah. the Heat was the one that I didn't think like made it all because I know that this year they were considered such an underdog. Right. So I felt like a few years ago they would have been at a, like a, the basement level. No, they teams. were in the championship. Yeah, apparently, yeah. And, and did you you saw Crystal this episode? You said right. Yeah. Did you recognize? Yeah. You recognize who she was? Oh no, but she had a balloon in the previous episode, and and he, Jace looked off dejectedly towards it. <laughs> she was the main yeah. kid in Beasts of the Southern Wild. Oh. The okay. really young kid. She was also in Twelve Years of Slave and Annie and Annie wow. trolls. So I mean, yeah, I, th I thought you were going to so recognize she's been her. In a lot. No, no, I wouldn't recognize. Reggie Rock, by the way, won it with this. Also wrote for players, but not the 2020 version, the Ice T version. Oh no, we've talked about this during the players podcast. I made a joke about like I think we that was part of our game. Right, where it was that, another that's basketball why, that's show, why I'm right? bringing it up. And, yeah, yeah. And, but the thing that he really that got, got famous horrible for, reviews. The one he got really got famous for was Shots Fired, which came out in uh, 2017 about the DOJ. That had an 84 percent on Rotten Tomatoes as well. So I think that was a main reason why he uh, wanted to create another show and created this all right cool trivia game thank you uh we'll see you on the next episode hope you enjoyed this one bye bye